Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, if you're on video, you'll see I have my candy cane mug. Today is Monday, December 4th. Ah, oh, 12, 4, 23. Hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I shouldn't make that sound like a question. Why do I feel good? I feel great. Um, yeah. So what all to tell you? I almost feel like I don't have much to say. I'm enjoying doing this revision of Onira. Uh, I didn't get super far on Friday, but I am feeling good about it. I'm at 23% through, and I think it'll go a lot faster this week. I may still finish by the end of this week. And if I don't, it's okay. Cause I'm like ahead of schedule for once. That's a good feeling. Um, yeah, and I've ended up adding a lot more words. I think on Friday I talked about how I'm an adder. Uh, I've added over 3000 words now at this point, a lot of it is bringing some of the world building forward, uh, which is just like always my thing, my thing, my thing. Um, yeah, so it, it's all good. I did, uh, I posted in one of my discords where I talked to a few other authors. Uh, I was amused at myself. Oh no, actually this one was in my, uh, my Patreon. Cause I do try to, share my process as I'm doing things. Because one thing that I find difficult about being where I'm at in my career and my craft and my art, and I feel so hoity toity saying those things, but here we are, is that it's sometimes difficult for me to remember what it was like for me when I was first starting out. You know, I almost don't quite recall what it was like for me then. Um, uh, and so when people ask me how I do X, Y, Z, it's sometimes hard for me to articulate. And I think this happens a lot. Um, I think it's difficult to learn from people who have been doing something for a really long time because they're almost not capable of explaining it to someone who's not at their same level. I hope this is loud enough today. It's looking like it's not. And I keep thinking maybe I should start over, but I'm not going to, I'm going to bring the webcam a little closer. Does that help? It doesn't. Uh. Well, we'll just hope, hope for the best. Uh, apologies if it's not loud enough. So anyway, um, what was I talking about? I remember I had to pause and think about it. Regather my train of thought. So I posted in my discord, like when things occur to me as I'm working, I try to share it. And so I was working along. And one thing I noticed I've done is I've like been rearranging paragraphs as I revise because, because I am a pantser and because I write for discovery. And so sometimes the order of logic is backward because it's me figuring things out as opposed to putting the salient thing up front and then dissecting it. I am dissecting, investigating and finding the salient thing. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, I, found something. I don't remember what it was, but it was an internal inconsistency. It was something I'd figured out later. And I kind of cursed myself as I was fixing it. And I said, Jeffy, you fucking pantser. Oops. I used the F word. I've been trying not to, uh, but that is, that is verisimilitude. I did say that out loud. And I shared that with the gals. Um, so far it's all gals in my discord. And they laughed, they appreciated it. And I said, the moral is because I'm always, you know, if you've been listening to me any, any length of time, you know that one of my mantras is own your process, 
find out what your process is and to own it. And so I added a, uh, a slight, not a caveat, but an addendum, I suppose, a point of clarification. I said, owning your process doesn't mean you always love it. That's the way of the world. Um, but it is your process, so you get to have it, whether you want to or not. <laughs> So I almost never use that term because I don't like it. Uh, for those of you who haven't been listening to me forever, the reason I don't like it is pantser comes from fly by the seat of your pants, which I believe is really a term created by the pre plotters to reflect their great discomfort with this method. Uh, normally I call it being an intuitive writer, write for discovery, being a gardener, uh, where you plant the seeds and you nurture them. It's just that sometimes when you're writing a story, you need to talk about the whole garden before you talk about the seeds growing up and the flowers blooming. So for me, cancer is actually a curse word uh, along the lines of the F word. So I just was amused myself. The great news, the very exciting news is that Friday I got a text from Agent Sarah uh, which I was surprised by because she is in Scotland on vacation and she was like, maybe going to not take her laptop with her. And I was, I was team. Don't take your laptop. I was like, you know, give yourself the full mental break. Do as I say, not as I do. So she texts me and says she was working. She ended up having to work on a couple other things, but that my tour contract was coming because I had asked my editor, Allie, if we could, if there was any way I could get paid in this tax year, because this was a relatively low income year for me because I had so, so few indie releases, um, writing all of these books for traditional publishing instead. And so I'd asked, could I get the money in this tax year? Because when you sign, um, for those of you who don't know, you know, you get that big advance for like the two books and Tor's model is, and it varies between publishers, but they give you one third of that upon signing. So it's a pretty good chunk of money, uh, which is great to have, but it's also a big tax bump. Right. And I thought, oh, cause next year should be a much better income year. And I, uh, I'm, I'm, at least we hope, right? But yes, I'm, I'm looking at next year being a, a much bigger year. And it's like, oh, I would really love to have this chunk in 2023. And so I kind of hesitated because I didn't want to be a nudge, but I, I had some questions about the revision. So I asked Allie about that. And then I said, is, you know, maybe we're out of time to do this, but there's is there any way this could happen? And she said she would send the, what they would need for their timeline to my agency and that she totally understood that author finances are a challenge, which I really appreciated. I, I feel like I need to say this because there's so much out there and it's primarily from the indie crowd, although not entirely, but you know, the bitching about traditional publishing and the bad things about it. And I will never say that traditional publishing is perfect. I don't think anyone in traditional publishing will say that it's perfect, but you know, painting them as these demons is, is incorrect. Uh, one thing you have to remember about writers is that writers are creative people, right? By definition, especially genre writers, um, imagination, looking for danger, paranoia, all of those kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Assistant Kareem sent me a post from a writer sort of tangentially in my genre, uh, something that she had posted that's just like about her dissolving marriage. And then there's just like so much cray in this post. And it's like, well, I think she flipped her lid because if she were writing this, it would make a lot more sense. She would have, I, I, she's a great writer. She would have liked write it, um, write it. I, I, as a writer too, she would have written it much more tightly than that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of concerning. It's, it's too bad. This is, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of another person 
who even now I probably shouldn't say who it is, but very famously uh, kind of flipped her lid and decided that her husband, ex-husband and his new girlfriend were poisoning her. And she had this very elaborate scenario for how that worked. Anyway, this is all beside the point. Uh, I really appreciated that Allie was like right away. Yes, I understand author finances are challenging. Let's see if we can get you that money. Sarah is working from Scotland. I got the contract on Friday, went over it. Um, Sarah had already reviewed it. So she had, you know, gone through everything and I should get that money now in December. So I'm just very happy. And it was great to sign the contract. So we're still not announcing because we're still debating the title not actively debating, but uh, have not settled upon the title. So that'll probably be in the new year. But um, yeah, I, you know, there are people who, so here's another thing about author contracts with traditional publishing. Um, I know of authors who will say that they would not have worked on this revision until they had the con signed contract. Um, they won't talk about it until like I have, until I have the signed contract. And yes, I am absolutely a believer in contracts. Um, having been the low, these 33 years, almost, is it almost 34 or is it coming up on 33? Yeah. Doesn't matter with a man who is divorced with kids and how many times we had to go like back to court or to mediation to argue with his ex-wife about X, Y, Z. I'm very much a believer in, is it in the contract? What does the contract say? Um, <laughs> when my first agent, uh, flamed out, she had a whole lot of stuff happen in her life. And then she went to a different agency and she asked me to follow her, uh, because you sign with the agency, not the agent. And I looked and she sent me the contract for the new agency and it had a couple of really bad lines in it. Uh, and I will share with you. Uh, there's no reason I can't share. That's right. Uh, so first of all, it laid claim to everything I wrote. <laughs> I, I get so upset about it. I get a little ch choked up. It said that, uh, the agency, I can't remember exactly how it was phrased, but they, that the agency that I had to give everything I wrote to the agency. And if I, if they decided, I don't know if it was even that anyway, the, it's been so long now, uh, the way that it generally works, like the way it works with Sarah is if I write something like, okay, well, let's talk about Onira, you know, and I'm like, I don't know if you'll like this or not. She said, let me take a look at it. She took a look at it and she said, I want to take this on submission. And she and I discussed it. And, you know, she said, I want to do, you know, I know you want to release. And so it will be limited. We went out for 30 days, all of this kind of thing. Sarah and I have been working together for a while. So we have a great working relationship. And that's part of my point here. I do have one is that this you know, you, you are working with people and there's a certain level of trust involved. Uh, especially like, you know, that the contract's coming. It just is going to take a little while. Um, actually they're a little bit of a tangent here in some ways tour is a little bit more out than I am because my editor, like if the contract fell through, because my editor already gave me her editorial insight. And so there are some publishers who rather terribly try to lay claim to the edited manuscript. Like, so if an author gets the edits, makes revisions and they part ways, there's one publisher. Um, I've heard that entangled has done this on occasion saying that the author is then not allowed to use that because they've already gotten that editorial input. That's not a great way to do business either. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, so going back to, you know, like the contract, the agency contract, generally it's so now, now that Sarah has sold Onira for me, she will get her 15% of that in perpetuity. 
Uh, but for instance, on Bonds of Magic and Renegades of Magic, Sarah doesn't get any piece of that because I self publish those. If she sells sub rights for me, she gets 15% of that. But so what this agency said was everything I wrote, not everything I gave to the agency to sell. Um, and I mean, it literally said that. And when I was talking with another of her clients who was trying to decide whether or not to go to follow her. And I said, I wasn't going to, cause I, and I told her that I said, I can't sign this contract. And he's, he was looking and he said, well, I don't think that line means what you think it means. <laughs> it's like, it really doesn't matter if it's what I think it means. It's if I end up in front of a judge, this is potentially what it's interpreted to mean. It would mean that everything I wrote, belong to the agency and no, 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 no. So, um, so yeah, it was great to go through the contract, see all the things that Sarah had written in, um, something that's really salient now for you authors out there is that there are some publishers, not Macmillan, not Tor, uh, but some other ones that are trying to use. Okay. So there's this clause in your contract that says, if your sales fall below a certain threshold, if the books are out of print, uh, and, 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 and people start getting into the ands and the wars. if the books are out of print, that's one of the conditions for having your rights reverted. And it's also, or if you sell fewer copies or if it's selling less than $200 a year or something like that, then you get your rights reverted and you can self publish them. And uh, particularly now that's a big deal, right? That's how I got my Ted and Karina press backs, books back. Um, but there are some publishers out there who are trying to use the availability, I don't know why I'm being tongue tied, the availability of print on demand of POD as to say that the books have not gone out of print because they can always be printed. Therefore they're not out of print. And that's when they start tangling into the ands and ors, because even if the books are selling, you know, five copies a year and making, you know, $20 or something like that, they've still got that one clause saying, yes, but they're still in print because of POD and you can't ever have your rights back. And it, it's not good. It's really a bad practice. And so I noticed that, um, Sarah had spelled out even more carefully what those conditions would, would be, which I appreciated. So that was exciting. Um, and I had a great weekend. I helped Melinda Snodgrass with getting her Imperial saga. She's gotten her rights back on that self publishing those. So we worked on getting those up on Amazon and yeah, that was, it was great. And I've got more things to say, but I'm just about out of time. So I think I'll call it good, but, um, yeah, hope things are going well in your world and I will talk to you all on Friday. You all take care.